honey. I'm just at the grocery store with Jacob. What kind of breakfast does your mother like again? I can't remember for the life of me. Oh, yeah, no worries. I'm pretty sure she likes oatmeal. Not those little packets, though. She likes proper oatmeal with yogurt, so you may need to grab a tub of yogurt as well. This will be an interesting two weeks with my mother staying with us. I'm just glad that my dad is making the trip, or else our house would have been squishy. It's already a tight squeeze in my opinion. But then again, I'm not really used to hosting family members. Yeah, moving to an entirely new city without knowing anyone was a hard choice. But now we're both in better jobs and have access to better schools for Jacob. It just sucks that I missed my grandpa's last couple of months. He went pretty suddenly. I mean, last Christmas he didn't have a care in the world. He was always known for being sprightly for a 90-year-old. <laughs> Remember when he saw himself in the newspaper after they did that article on him? How could I forget? He ate about three boxes of mint chocolate in celebration. Yeah, if there was one thing that man could do, it was put away his mint chocolate. You don't suppose that's where Jacob got his little obsession with it? I remember hating anything to do with mint at his age, but in the 10 minutes we've been in this grocery store, he's grabbed five different mint chocolate bars. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Those two were always up to no good. I'm sad he probably won't remember his great grandpa. Aw, babe. I'm sorry. This must be hard for you as well, huh? Not as hard as it probably is for my mom. She was daddy's girl and absolutely loved Grandpa James. I remember this one time they both got dressed up on Halloween and put on an elaborate performance for the trick-or-treaters. Really? <laughs> How old were you? I was like eight and absolutely mortified about it all. Anyways, I think it'll be good for my mom to be here. She can focus on Jacob and forget the funeral. Too bad dad had to stay for work. Yeah, that man is a working machine. Isn't he supposed to retire next year? Yeah, but I doubt he will. Besides, he hates planes. Makes sense. Well, maybe I will pick up a bag of mint chocolate to have around the house for your mom. We'll have to be careful to keep Jacob out of it, though. Aw, that'd be really sweet, honey. It's literally no problem. I want to help you both as best as I can. I love you. Love you too, babe. Jacob and I'll see you when we get home. How do you think your mother is settling in? Do you think she'll be comfortable in the guest room? Yes, babe. I'm sure everything's fine. Okay. It's just that she was pretty quiet. Well, she did just lose her dad, like, last week. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, hopefully hanging out with Jacob for a few days will help her open up her shell. I want her to feel as comfortable as possible. You're the best. I'm positive she'll be comfortable. I know that she'll return to her usual chatty state before we know it. I mean, she looked tired when she got in. That could be it too. Okay, if you say so. I know so, babe. We'll give her a couple of days and she'll be back to normal. I'm also a bit worried about Jacob as well, though. Jacob? Why is that? Well, he only sees his extended family a couple of times a year. What if he doesn't recognize his grandmother? It's been almost four months, and I'm not sure how reliable a five-year-old's memory is. I'm sure he'll be fine. Besides, it's not like my mother would get offended if... Hey, Janine. I just wanted to say thank you for agreeing to watch Jacob. It was really nice of you. Noah and I completely forgot about the charity auction tickets. It ended up being a really nice date night, and Lord knows that we needed it. It was absolutely no trouble at all. Jacob and I got along so well and had many great conversations. Conversations? Yay, I'm glad he's been very talkative with you. We were worried that he'd be shy or something considering that he hadn't seen you in like four months. Nonsense. Family never forgets one another. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose so. But you never know with a five-year-old. He's got an old soul. There was never any doubt in my mind he wouldn't recognize me. Right. What kind of things did y'all talk about? Did he show you his dinosaur collection? Oh, nothing much. Yeah, he showed me all those cool little dinosaur figures he has. But we also just talked about the good old days. You know, how it is with kindred spirits. Right. <laughs> Well, anyways, it was incredibly kind of you. It seems like he was able to cheer you up a lot, which is good. 
Noah and I want you to feel comfortable and to have a good time while here. Yes, absolutely. My time here has already been very healing. I can't believe I didn't think about this sooner. Well, the funeral was only last week. And Noah and I felt so bad that we couldn't get the time off work. Our jobs are very fulfilling, but they do end up taking a lot of our time. It's nice that Jacob gets to stay home with his grandma this week, too. I'm probably more excited about it than he is. <laughs> we have so much to catch up on. Wow, he's really brightened your mood, hadn't he? I'm glad. We were thinking that we could take a quick day trip to the mountains at the weekend. Escape the city for a while and get some fresh air. Jacob loves it up on the trails. Oh yeah, he's always loved the outdoors. That doesn't surprise me at all. It doesn't? No, of course not. It makes perfect sense. Perfect sense? More sense than anything else in the world. Also today, how many mint chocolates am I allowed to give him? Oh, we usually only let him have one every couple of days. We don't want to spoil him or disrupt his appetite schedule. Children are pretty finicky like that. <laughs> Surely we can spare him one or two more. You know how much he loves them. He can probably eat boxes full of it, even while still being this young. We'd prefer it if he wasn't fed too many sweets. But what about this long journey to get him here? Where? Here, to Earth. It must have been quite the journey, and the little mister deserves a treat for it. Oh, do you mean like when he was born? I don't think children nor adults remember being born, so I'm sure he's fine. Just the one, please. Very well. Okay, well, I suppose I better get back to work. Noah will be home shortly after two, and I'll be home around five. Okay, that gives Jacob and me enough time to play our favorite games. Aw, do you already have favorite games to play together? That's so special. Well, he's a special boy. Gosh, you read about stories of it happening, but you just don't think it's going to happen to you until it does, you know? Uh, actually, I'm confused. Oh, I just meant that Jacob was meant to be here. Aw, I think so, too. He's been such a blessing to Noah and my life. The biggest blessing of my life. And at exactly the right time, too. That's so sweet. Okay, I better go. I have a meeting. Just wanted to reach out and say thank you once again for watching him. For sure. It's my pleasure. Hey, honey, I'm on my way home. What did you want to eat tonight? I want to make sure I pick up everything at the store. Oh, right. I'm thinking something like shepherd's pie, yeah? Something everyone can enjoy. Sounds great. I think we need onions for that. I'll swing by the store to pick some up. How has your day been so far? It's going pretty well. I think your mother has really tapped into her spiritual side. What? What? Is that wrong? Many people do that when they lose someone close like family. No, it's not that. I know a lot of people tend to lean into religion or spirituality when times are tough, but definitely not my mother. <laughs> what do you mean? Why is it so crazy that she would become more spiritual during this whole thing? It's not crazy. It's just insanely improbable. Again, what do you mean? Is your mother opposed to religion or something? Or something. She thinks all of it is nonsense and has never believed a word of it. Even when she was a kid. Anything to do with spirituality or religion just never appealed to her. That's how all of our siblings were raised, too. Oh, that's interesting. I think she might have changed her tune since your grandpa died. What makes you think that? Well, I was texting her earlier, and she was saying a bunch of stuff about journeys, destiny, and kindred spirits. So I just assume that she's gotten extremely spiritual since her father died. She really said all that? Wow, that's weird. What were you talking about? Mainly just talking about Jacob. Whoa, what? Why would she be talking about spirituality and journeys when it comes to our five-year-old son? I don't know. I was pretty confused for most of the conversation. I just thought that she was a lot more spiritual than I had previously realized. But now that you've told me all of that, that makes it really weird. What do you think is happening? I have no clue. Maybe we should talk to her? No! I mean, if she seems like she's lost her mind, yes. But she's really opened up these last couple of days, and I don't want to do anything that would disturb the peace. Disturb the peace? My mother is saying things I have never heard her say. 
I think we should check in on her. What if she's unwittingly joined a cult? Come on, babe. Do you really think your father would allow her to join some cult? No. But still, this is really weird. People grieve in weird ways, honey. But if you're genuinely worried, we can keep an eye on it. But until she says something completely out of left field, then we'll just call it grief, yeah? Fine. But let's keep an extra close eye on her. Okay, but not in a creepy way, right? She's really enjoying hanging out with Jacob, and I don't want to mess with that. Yeah, okay. Okay. But the moment she says anything weird, I'm confronting her about it. Hi, Janine. I have something I need to ask you. Yes? Well, I couldn't help but notice that about half the bag of mint chocolates was gone by the time I got home yesterday. I understand that it could have been you snacking on them, and if so, great. Noah and I wanted to buy them for you as a nice little reminder of your dad. But I noticed yesterday that Jacob didn't touch a bite of his food, and then around one this morning he puked, and it looked like it was just chocolate. I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. Maybe our little rascal managed to sneak a lot more treats than he was allowed. But I wanted to ask you about it. I just thought that only giving him one chocolate after everything he's done for me was a bit ungrateful. So yes, I did give Jacob as many chocolates as he wanted. I'm sorry that it upset his stomach. He can usually down bags of chocolate with no problem. It's always fascinated me. Wait, what? I'm confused. What journey? And nothing makes it okay for you to go against Noah and I's expressed wishes. We know our son the best and what he can and can't handle. Well, I beg to differ, dear. I think if anyone knows him, it's me. Not to be rude or anything, Janine, because having you here has been wonderful for all of us, but you don't know Jacob better than me and Noah. We're his parents. We know everything there is to know about our little guy. And you saying differently is a little hurtful, if I'm being honest. Well, you can just as easily say that kids know the most about their parents. I mean, they grew up with their parents, right? They know what makes them tick, what they like, and how they behave, right? Yes, I suppose so. But I don't know why you're bringing this up. That only further proves my point, doesn't it? The people who know Jacob best are his parents, and Jacob knows and loves us best. Excuse me? You don't think Jacob loves me? I've known him longer than you. First of all, that's not what I mean. Second, what the heck are you talking about? You only see him like twice a year. I'm having a really hard time following what you're saying. What do you mean by journey? And what do you mean when you say that Jacob can usually handle bags of chocolate? We've never fed him bags of chocolate. No sane parent would. That's incredibly unhealthy for a five-year-old. Wow, now I can see why I felt like I needed to come for a visit ASAP. It's clear that Jacob was calling to me. What? What does that mean? Don't you get it? Can't you see it? It's right in front of your face, but you're too blind to see it. You're asleep. I'm awake. Now I'm the only one who can see. What? You're not making any sense at all, Janine. In fact, you're kind of scaring me. Is everything okay? Are you all right? Noah and I are worried about you. You're only scared because I'm showing you the light. Your eye is being opened into a whole new universe of possibility. You want to know what my father said to me as he was taking his last breaths? In that dreaded hospital bed? He told me that he'd always be with me. And he was right. He journeyed far and wide to come back to me. And now that he is here, he's been forsaken. Okay, seriously, Janine, are you okay? Have you been taking anything? Have you joined a cult or something? I'm extremely worried about your mental state right now. I know that losing your dad must have been terrible and painful, and it's perfectly natural for you to want to find meaning behind his passing. That's great. But if you've joined some weird religious sect, you need to tell us so we can help you. All this talk about the universe and journeys is worrying me. Noah said that you never believed in or subscribed to any sort of spirituality or religion. And that, with the obvious grief you're going through, can make you susceptible to rash decisions like joining a cult. We can help you, Janine. It isn't too late. What? What are you talking about? 
Of course I haven't joined some weird cult. My mind's just been opened by this whole experience. Yes, I've never been one to believe in this sort of thing, but now that I'm awake, I can see now. See what? What are you talking about? Gosh, it must be so hard to still be in the darkness. I'm talking about Jacob. What about Jacob? What has this got to do with our son? He is my father. What? Yes, you see now, don't you? No, I really, really don't. What the heck are you on about? Your mind is about to be blown. Jacob is the reincarnation of my father. What? You see it now, don't you? It all makes sense. I knew I was drawn to your house, to Jacob, for some reason. Why do you think I still came even though my husband couldn't come with me? Because you wanted to see your grandchild. Exactly. Jacob, or more accurately, my father James' soul was calling out to me from Jacob. I couldn't understand why I was here when I showed up. I was so blinded by my grief. But then the next day, Jacob did the most amazing thing. What? What did he do? He recognized me. Okay, I'm still not following. What? You're convinced that my son is your father reincarnated because he recognized you? His grandma? No. See, you had it absolutely right before. How could a five-year-old fully recognize his grandma after months apart? When realistically, he's only met me one time. There's no way he remembers meeting me as a baby or as a four-year-old. I think we need to have a little sit-down, okay? Why don't you just relax, sit on the couch, and Noah and I will be home shortly. Then we can discuss this a bit better together. No, you are not listening. Jacob recognized me, and he called me Janny. Janny! Can't you see? My dad was the only one who called me that. It's him, I'm telling you. He even has his eyes and nose. They're basically twins. Yes, I'll admit that Jacob calls you Janny, but that's probably because we call you Granny and Janine. He's obviously just confused and has mixed up your names together. Kids do it all the time. Besides, Janny isn't really a hard nickname to come up with. How dare you? This is between me and my father and me and Jacob, who is still my father. Do you know how absolutely insane you sound right now? They look exactly the same. You can't deny it. Yes, because of genetics, Janine. James is Jacob's grandfather. Of course his genetics are going to show up in Jacob. But Jacob has blonde hair like me, not brown hair like James, okay? I really think you need to sit somewhere. I'm going to phone my neighbor to maybe come and get Jacob. What? No! You can't take him from me. I'm not going to lose my father twice. For the last time, Janine, Jacob is not James. I think you've had a mental break. My neighbor, Alice, is going to stop by in a few minutes and take Jacob with her. Then Noah and I will be home in a bit for us to sit down and have a nice long talk, okay? That's what's best for Jacob, yeah? No, you don't even know him. He was suffering before because you both didn't understand who he was. That's why I was called here. Okay, enough. You weren't called here or whatever. We've invited you to come stay. And I seriously need you to calm down. I just want to protect Jacob. I'm the only one who can do it. I'm taking him with me. Yes, that makes sense. Janine? No. Just sign the adoption papers when they show up. I'm the only one who can take care of Jacob. I'm his daughter. He took care of me when I was a kid, and now it's my turn. It all makes sense. Janine, please just stay there. I'm on my way. We'll be long gone by the time you get here. This is our destiny. I'll leave you one of his blankets. Goodbye. Babe, your mother has gone absolutely insane. You need to come home right now. What? What's going on? Is everything all right? No! She's taken Jacob and she says she's going to adopt him. I have no idea where they are. What? What happened? I'm on my way home. Wait, you need to get the police on the phone. I'm looking up the Find Me feature on his watch. I'll give you his coordinates once I find them out. She stole our child, Noah! Okay, what happened? I thought everything was okay. You said she was coming out of her shell. Apparently, she was coming too much out of her shell. 
She's out of her mind. I confronted her about giving Jacob all that chocolate, and then she started again about journeys and the universe, and, and finally I asked her if she was okay, because she was not making any sense and was sounding certifiably insane. Oh, God. What did she say? She said that Jacob was her father, James, reincarnated. What? That's exactly what I said. Why would she even think that? I'm so confused. A couple of months ago, and she would have never believed anything like that. She said she knew it was James because he recognized her, and he has the same features as her, and because he loves mint chocolate. That doesn't make any sense. I know! Then she kept going on and on about how blind we are and how much Jacob has been suffering because we didn't recognize that it was James. And you know how the cute way he's been mixing up her name, Janny? Yes. I thought it was super cute. Please don't tell me that she's somehow twisted that, too. Same. But apparently, that was her nickname given that only her dad called her. And that was the nail in the coffin, I think. Now she has our son, and I have no idea where she's taking him. Wait, why did she take him? Because I told her I was sending Alice to come pick him up. I was so scared because she was obviously not a sound mind that Jacob would get hurt. I told her to sit and wait while Alice took Jacob and she freaked out and took him. Wait, I know where they are. I just got his coordinates from his watch. I'm calling the police. Let's get our son back. Janine, please come back. You're putting Jacob in danger. What? How dare you? I'm the only good thing for him. I'm the only one that sees that he's really James. Janine, you're grieving. And your grief is making you connect things in your mind that aren't there. Noah and I are terrified and we want our son back. Where are you? We've already gone. Jacob is my father's reincarnation. You can't stop fate. But the cops can. Huh? You're on your way to the airport right now, aren't you? What? No. Oh, really? Because according to our son's watch, you're just pulling into the departure's parking lot at the airport. How the hell did you know that? Did the universe tell you? No, technology did. The cops are on their way, and the airport police should be arriving in less than a minute. How could you take our son? He's not your son. Not really. He is my dad. I can't believe that you're trying to separate us. I am so sorry for your loss, Janine. You need help. We're sending you to the asylum. No, no, no. It's too late, Janine. There's nothing you can do. No, we'll visit you, probably. Janine tried to reason with the police and convince them that Jacob was James. They'll now stand as witnesses to Jane's insanity at trial where she'll be convicted of kidnapping and be sent to the state asylum. When Noah's dad found out, he was pretty crushed. But knowing that his only grandson was safe, he agreed to Janine being admitted. The psychiatrist confirmed what we had known all along. She had experienced a mental break after losing her father. Jacob was fine after everything was said and done. As for Noah and me... We don't think it's okay for Janine to see Jacob. We don't want to play into her delusions and grandeur.